Hello chess friends and welcome to Zaro's chess channel and welcome to my series the Nimzo Indian Defense. So in this series we'll see a very effective weapon while playing against d4. So you had probably your own problems while playing against d4. Uh, I had also my troubles and in this series we'll try to improve our opening skills because in this series we'll cover all of the possible uh, sidelines that can happen to you in the Nimzo Indian Defense and I think we'll have a very very nice journey because uh, it's very important to have all of the sidelines covered in order to have a very nice repertoire for yourself while playing as black especially because uh, sometimes you have to be prepared you cannot just play uh, one particular opening you have to also know all of the sidelines and in this series we'll see uh, very very nice uh, sidelines and some tactical and positional uh, ideas of this very nice opening against d4 so today we'll start uh, the so-called samish variation of the nimzo indian and i'll show you uh, what are the best moves uh, what are the uh, main strategical ideas in the middle game while playing uh, this nimzo indian defense and I'll show you also what are your, or your opponent's ideas because you have to understand your opponent's ideas if you want to be familiar with your own possibilities in the game. So that's why it's really important to know also what your opponent is thinking. So uh, let's see now this sameish variation of the Nimzo Indian and what are the problems of this opening line. So here uh, d4 and knight on f6 after c4 as I said we have now the move e, e6 which is the common move and now knight on c3 and now bishop on b4 this is now this uh, common nimzo indian setup we have many variations e3 f3 uh, bishop on d2 queen on c2 queen on b3 but today we'll analyze this so-called samish variation with the move a3 and here after b, uh, bishop takes on c3 and b takes c3 we have now a completely new game because uh, uh, we have now the uh, double pawns uh, here by white, the uh, pawns on c uh, c3 and c4, but white has the bishop pair and let's see now what are the main main ideas here for white and black. Uh, I've prepared the, the main uh, strategical elements of this game. First of all, it's a game played uh, uh, bishop versus knight. So we are basically playing uh, with this dark school bishop against one of these uh, knights. So it means the bishop, bishop versus knight uh, game has its own rules. So it means we have uh, to create sort of a blocked and static pawn structures uh, in the center. So it means uh, the more static the game bec uh, becomes, it's uh, good for us. The more dynamic the game uh, uh, is becoming, uh, of course, it's not good for us because then the position get uh, can get open for the bishops and it's it's something that you shouldn't allow in in the game uh the other thing is while playing against this bishop there is uh, this principle of uh, building this fortress or bu building sort of a uh, pawn structure on dark squares so it's, you see well, while playing uh, now against the dark square bishop uh, one of the ideas uh, while playing against the dark square bishop is to create uh, all of our pawns on dark square so it means uh, the main moves in this uh, in this opening line is, to, is are the moves d6 uh, c5 e5 uh, also with some possibilities h h6 and g5 so you see we're battling against this dark square bishop by putting our own pawns on dark squares and try to uh, restrict uh, our opponent's uh, bishop's activity uh, as much as we can because the, this bishop uh, can sometimes be blocked out by our own pawns and then uh, our opponent doesn't have any more uh, the advantage of the bishop pair. Um, the the other important thing is uh, is this uh, pawn storms in the center. So while playing uh, these setups, uh, you see the more imp uh, the most important thing from a pawn structure point of view is that your opponent has here uh, four pawns against your three central pawns so in the continuation of the game um, here I I will show you now the common pawn structure that can happen in these types of variations we have now you see a uh, pawn majority by white of uh, five on four pawns so it means uh, um, white has created sort of a pawn storm in the center and what you shouldn't allow is uh, create uh, your opponent to create sort of a dynamic pawn structure. Uh, we should try uh, to have uh, some kind of a staticity here um, uh, of the pawns. 
but uh, sometimes we get scared when your opponent is pushing you f uh, pushing you away with your uh, with his pawns then we get uh, really scared we get deflected by our own ideas we don't know what to do well one of the best ways to handle the spawn storm is just wait uh, wait to pawn storm to come because if you try something like here uh, the, the, if white tries something like d takes c5 here you see it was white moved uh, then we have d takes uh, d takes c5 and you see now after maybe e takes f5 and uh, e takes f5 you see we have now three on two situation but the position of the spawns is really static so it means uh, white didn't gain any advantage of his pawn storm in the center so this would be a favorable pawn structure that we can hope for in this name so in the setup let's see now uh, another possible uh, mistake that that you can make it's this so uh, it's trading off the pawns in the center after c takes d4 and uh, here c takes d4 i just want you to imagine uh, this position with uh, with some pieces on the board with protected uh, pawns uh, of course you can take now the pawn but that's not my point if this pawn would would be protected and also this pawn uh, on e4 you see then then uh, your opponent will continue in the center with on three on two or four on three situation which is not good and that's why you should avoid to take off the pawns and improve your opponent's uh, pawn, uh, pawn structure here in the center here uh, you see one of the main ideas uh, for white is to create sort of a tempo on your knight that's why i've placed this knight here uh, without any pieces on the board because uh, while gain, gaining a tempo on your knight if you take some uh, somehow maybe e takes d5 and then c takes d5 and maybe you place something like knight on e7 then you see after e5 your opponent has again a very very dynamic pawn structure and bishops love uh, this kind of pawn structures i just want you again imagine this uh, pawn that this pawn is protected uh, it's not the point uh, of um, uh, ge uh, getting now pawns here it's the point uh, uh, my point is here creating a, cer a certain dynami uh, the dynamic pawn structures because here after these take c5 you see we, we didn't have any more these problems or here your opponent can play something like e5 and really uh, we have again a static pawn structures with some bishops on the board this is a favorable favorable pawn structure for the knight uh, let's go back uh, to the setup uh, also one uh, one of our main strategical ideas can be the positional trades of pieces so it means uh, the bishop pair here in the in the continuation of the game is uh, is is the main power of of whites and that's why sometimes in some occasions we should trade off this light square bishops and then your opponent has maybe a weak dark square bishop because you see these pawns here on a3 c3 and d4 are on dark square so it means uh, this is a sort of idea uh, to uh, trade off the slides with bishop and go maybe into a favorable mid game uh, one of the ideas can also be to go maybe into a fav uh, favorable end game uh, with the two knights versus two bishop um, uh, end game if the position of course allows it because uh, if we create a really really compact and static position then it's uh, very good to continue with the knights on the board so um, the other um, uh, and it's very important uh, Aaron Nimtsovich to create of this very very uh, nice opening uh, well he was familiar with this elements of the blockade so the elements of the blockade we'll see now in a couple of examples are very very important in order uh, to get a better understanding of the Nimtso Indian defense because uh, when when your opponent has maybe an advanced pawn or an advanced supported pass pawn then you should create a blockade and the best blockade is to create with the knight maybe uh, here maybe on d6 if your opponent gets this uh, pawn too advanced if we if he creates somehow maybe this d pawn uh, as a supported pass pawn then you can you should really really try to create a blocking system against this pawn so uh, the other important thing is that uh, you can also go into favorable endgame it means by trading off all of these pieces of the board if you can just imagine uh, without the queens rooks uh, knights bishops on the board this will be a favorable endgame for you because uh, your opponent has the main weakness of this double pawn and you could go maybe into a favorable pawn endgame and uh, uh, by 
one of the main ideas, uh, generally speaking, in the Nimso Indian setup is this exploiting weaknesses. The main weaknesses uh, in this Nimso Indian setup are this C4 and 3 3 pawns. So these are our main main uh, attacking attacking possibilities here, We're creating simple threats against uh, the C4 or C3 pawn. So that's why. Uh, our ideas in the middle game can also be uh, attacking these two points. So, while knowing now this main element uh, of, of this Nimzo Indian setup, uh, I wanted to show you some good and instructive games. The first instructive game, it was played by Tame Rajabov against uh, Vishwanathan Anand. Vishwanathan Anand, the former world champion, very nice, uh, very strong player and uh, very nice tactician, but also very nice positional player. Here in the continuation, uh, he played the move c5, and that's the move I recommend you in this sameish setup. c5, uh, creating an immediate uh, fortress, as I mentioned, we should try some for building some fortresses on dark squares. Uh, of course, with the preparation to play maybe b6, also d6, then h6, g5. So these are these fortress moves that I've explained. c5. Uh, if your opponent tries maybe something like d5, this is not good and that's uh, not this, a good move here for white but uh, most of most players make uh, can make this mistake uh, e takes d5 and you see after c takes d5 we have now created the situation which i to try uh, which you should really try to avoid because now you have improved uh, uh, here the pawn structure in the center so your opponent doesn't have any more the double pawn situation and goes now in a very very good and favorable middle game with the bishop pair and of course uh, he'll support this pawn with the move c4 so but generally speaking here uh, d5 is not so good because we can simply play uh, on our own idea playing the move d6 here if your opponent tries uh, uh, d takes e6 then bishop on e6 is perfectly fine uh, because if your opponent tries bishop on f4 bishop on c4 can be the idea but now after queen on a4 here it's not so good because uh, then we have of course the move b5 and uh, it's a better continuation if uh, queen on d6 here uh, is played then we can play knight uh, knight on d7 I'm not recommending you that uh, you should really, really trade off the queens in an early stage of the game. This bishop is very well placed. It creates sort of a positional pin here. If uh, your opponent tries something like maybe e3, then queen on uh, a5 is very powerful. If your opponent tries bishop on uh, bishop on e5, then castling uh, uh, casting long is very, very powerful. Here, after bishop on c4, we can take. After queen takes, now knight on uh, knight on. Um, uh, e7 is a very powerful move after maybe uh, queen on uh, uh, g uh, queen on g7 then rook on uh, rook on uh, uh, g8 attacking the queen our main target is of course the spawn on c3 with a double attack on the king and the knight and this will be game over for for or for black um here uh, in the continuation f3 it can be played after your potential e6 move uh, here uh, you can simply castle after uh, e4 now uh, it's an idea here you can allow your opponent uh, to uh, improve his uh, pawn structure because after c takes uh, d5 uh, now you see black has a very very uh, weak uh, white has a very weak pawn structure we can also try some tactical ideas here after knight on e4 after f takes e4 with the queen on h4 after maybe uh, g3 uh, queen on uh, e4 is very powerful uh, but uh, the best way uh, to play this uh, continuation here is uh, knight on h5 uh, although we don't have uh, uh, the dark square bishop on the board it's really a paradoxical thing that uh, white has here dark square problems because after bishop on e3 we can try f5 after maybe e takes f5 then rook on uh, e7 uh, rook on e8 is a very very strong move and now after uh, king on uh, f2 we can try now this very very uh, tricky move uh, queen on uh, h4 and it will be game over if your opponent tries something like g3 here then f5 anyway uh, after maybe e takes f5 queen on e7 can be played 
after queen on e2 then queen on uh, f7 with the with the threat of course to play rook on e8 if g4 then rook on e8 and after bishop on e3 knight on f4 is very very powerful if your opponent tries to escape with the queen then queen on um, uh, queen on e7 if queen king on f2 then we have a very nice checkmate here uh, by the queen so uh, you see tricky tricky stuff so i think really this d5 uh, for your opponent uh, doesn't doesn't bring so much you see uh, you have some good counterplay here and the most common way here uh, in the continuation of the game is probably to play the move e3 and let's see now what happened in the game it as i said it was Taimur Rajabov against uh, Vishwanathan Anand here we have d6 uh, bishop on d3 and now knight on c6 so you see now we have uh, really our our knights on the best squares on the on the most natural squares on c6 f6 still we ha we are searching for a good position of the bishop probably by playing b6 and again bishop on a6 but i i'm i'm again pointing you out this this b6 move is still sort of a fortress against the star square bishop uh, still we want to bring all of our pawns on dark squares because we have to compete with this dark square bishop knight on e2 was played now b6 and now we have um, e4 and now knight on a5 exploiting this c4 weakness of course with the preparation to play um, the move bishop on a6 but as i said uh, uh, here castling can be played if your opponent tries immediately something like uh, something like i don't know uh, e5 as i said you should never uh, uh, improve the position of this pawn uh, because uh, here uh, it's, uh, it's not something that you have to worry because now this uh, e4 pawn gets uh, e5 pawn is the main weakness now after maybe knight on d7 and f4 we have created now this position that we wanted we have now a static pawn structure here uh, no uh, there is no uh, there are no dynamics anymore in the center so you see this e5 move is not something that you have to worry so when your opponent is playing Mm, with the pawns in the center you should always uh, try to think about the pos uh, the possible outcomes in the center because if if the position gets dynamic for the for, for this uh, bishops then it's probably game over for you so here castling castling pl was played and now bishop on uh, g5 it's a common idea pitting idea and here h takes perfectly fine if your opponent tries uh, bishop takes on f6 queen takes on f6 that doesn't bring any anything because here we can now in the next move play the move e5 and create a very very nice blocking system on dark squares the bishop here is paralyzed blocked out by its own pawn so this would be our main idea uh, in the game uh, bishop on h4 was played now g5 again battling against this dark square bishop knight uh, bishop on g3 and now knight on knight on uh, h5 f4 uh, played by uh, Taimur Rajabov now f5 as i said we have to create a blocking system against this bishop uh, the pawns have to move you see although the bo uh, both uh, knights are on the edge of the board but as i mentioned uh, here in this example uh, sometimes uh, your opponent can be an object of your opponent's attack maybe with the move d5 uh, with this uh, pawn breakthrough possibilities so that's why here it's not really a problem to have this knight on the edge of the board because they are not uh, vulnerable to your opponent's central attacks with some possible d5 or e5 moves so you see the knights on the board uh, on the edge of the board are perfectly fine here because we want to create a blocked system here after queen on c2 uh, um, g4 played by Vishwanathan Anand and now rook from a to d1 knight on g7 was played and now bishop on f2 now queen on c7 perfectly fine as i said uh, we have to be calm here uh, we of course don't want to take here uh, uh, for instance c takes d4 then after uh, c takes d4 as i mentioned we have improved uh, our opponent's uh, pawn structure in the center now our opponent has three on two so while playing the ninja in and never do that if you don't have a clear or maybe a tactical plan you'll see now another example in which i'll show you how um, black had the tactical possibilities but here i don't think to, that you have some immediate tactical possibilities so that's why you should really avoid this this types of lines here a queen on c7 played by anand and now here h5 you see 
uh, Vishwanathan Anand has played on now on a very very nice blocking system here Rook on uh, e1 was played Queen on f7 we have now e5 and now d takes e5 now the problem is uh, if you try to connect these pawns uh, here on uh, e5 you see now uh, Vishwanathan Anand took because he had now finally some tactical possibilities after h4 and knight on f1 we can play h3 uh, this is very good I think after g3 and then bishop on b7 with the idea queen on uh, d7 and then bishop uh, queen on uh, c6 with some with some checkmate threat so here you see that's why it was possible now finally to take in the center uh, if uh, white recaptures with this uh, uh, d pawn now we have again which i meant which i mentioned this static pawn structure again uh, with these two weak pawns and it's perfectly fine to continue here this bishop is blocked out this bishop is blocked out by our own pawn by our, by our black pawns and we have now maybe the possibility to create bishop on a6 uh, possible um, attacking uh, chances here rook on uh, d8 of course competing on the d file in the next move again we are threatening maybe to play the move um, h4 so this is a better better position here for black rook on e5 that's why it was played and now knight on c6 and now we have rook on e1 queen on c7 here d5 was played now knight on d8 as i said we are not allowing some um, uh, improvements of this uh, of the pawns if we take of course e takes d5 then this pawn comes put in the tempo if you move the knight then we have this position in which we have the supported pass pawn and it would be very very bad to play here as black in the game uh, after d5 knight on d8 was played now knight on e2 and now queen on uh, e7 by anand and uh, knight on g3 queen on f6 we have uh, knight on f1 knight on f7 and now we have uh, d takes e6 bishop takes on e6 knight on uh, e3 rook from a to d8 and now bishop on f1 rook takes uh, rook takes on d1 and now we have a very important move h4 uh, with the idea of course maybe to uh, even more uh, paralyze the position here on the king with, with the move h3 but now white uh, tried knight on uh, knight on d5 and here uh, this is what i meant about this blocking system here after bishop on d5 c takes d5 was played but it was not the problem not, uh, anymore because now vishwanathan Anand had the possibility to play the blockade and as i said the blockade in the Nimso Indian here it's uh, I've written down uh, it is this main element uh, of the Nimso Indian setup if you can create this powerful blockade I hope you realize that in uh, this position uh, after knight on d6 these bishops are really paralyzed because the, the bishop uh, the light square bishop is aiming into nothing and this uh, dark square bishop is blocked out by this very very nice pawn structure and with the blockade here Vishwanathan Anand played on a very very uh, good uh, position now because uh, we have also possibilities to create maybe an outpost of the knight on e4 uh, bishop on d3 was played and now knight on h5 g3 and now rook on e8 c4 was played and now uh, king on f7 queen on a4 and i'm not going to explain you now the whole game i just want you to realize that this is a very good position it is a top grandmaster level game because uh, i want you it's very important to to say that because uh, you see Temur Ajavo played also very very nice game but Vishwanathan Anand managed to get now out of this uh, pawn storm that Temur Ajabov has created and has now a very 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 nice position here with the block it the, this knight on d6 although it's preventing this d6 move itself it has still a very powerful central control and i've talked about this blockade uh, in one of my basics in chess uh, videos i'll show you the link of that video at the end of this video so you can uh, be more familiar with this blockade uh, in 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 the middle game and uh, here it meets with this very very nice idea positional idea in the middle game. so let's see now another example um here we have again uh, this uh, same -ish, uh, variation uh, here after um, um a3 we have bishop takes on c3 b takes uh, c3 and now c5 as i mentioned this uh, this is the move i'm recommending you while playing uh, against this same variation 
Here E3, uh, as uh, we can see, this is now a game uh, played by Temur Ajabov against Peter Leiko. Here castling, we have bishop on D3, now knight on C6, <coughs> knight on E2, B6, and now E4 was played by uh, Temur Ajabov. Uh, here, as I mentioned, very very important move, uh, knight on E8, also a common uh, move in the Nimtso Indian because as i said we are not allowing some tempos uh, by the spawns on our knights now after knight on e8 uh, castling now comes bishop on a6 uh, here f4 and now f5 again with the same idea to create a blockade uh, now this bishop is blocked out by its own pawn you see the temura java in this line didn't play the move bishop on uh, bishop on g5 with some pinning ideas he played a more direct line with an immediate pawn breakthrough in the center after f5 uh, we have d5 and now oh, finally uh, e takes d5 and here c takes d5 but uh, here Timur, uh, here peter leko saw a very nice tactical line that's why he allowed uh, here um, uh, Temur Ajabov to improve the position because after bishop on d3, queen on d3 we have f takes uh, uh, e4 and that's what I mean if you want to have a clarification in the center you should really really uh, create some tactical possibilities because here you see uh, Peter Leko plays with the tempo all the time here after queen on uh, e4 now knight on d6 here queen on uh, d3 but now knight on a5 here um, f5 queen on f6 again we are creating a blockade i'm pointing you out very important element of, of the nimzo indian here we are uh, creating a blocking against this potential potential f6 move rook on b1 was played rook on uh, e8 uh, this is now very nice uh, setup uh, the rooks are on the most active uh, files here the knights are very well uh, coordinated on around this very weak c4 square uh, knight on g3 was played and now very tricky move here by uh, peter leko if you of course take uh, then you get uh, uh, here c4 with the fork so you lose the rook that's why uh, queen on f3 was played knight takes on c1 rook takes on c1 and now rook on uh, e5 queen on f4 but now uh, peter leko uh, grabbed the pawn and uh, went into favorable endgame let's see the continuation knight on e4 queen on e7 was played the d6 here we have queen on e8 rook from c to uh, e1 knight on h6 trading off the queens uh, here and the rooks on f8 we have king on f8 rook on f1 here uh, knight on f7 king on uh, knight on d2 but here rook uh, king on e8 rook on uh, d1 queen on d5 uh, here uh, queen uh, rook on e1 and here rook on d8 and in this position uh temur ajabov resigned because you cannot protect anymore uh the spawn and uh, the knight is uh, attacked so it's of course a completely winning endgame here for black so i said i hope you realize this ideas the main main uh, ideas i've written it down here bishop versus knight block position so fighting the bishop creating dark square fortresses uh, battling the center pawn storm so don't get scared when your opponent has a uh, central cent pawn storm try to see the outcomes uh, of this central pawn storm because uh, if you uh, can predict the outcomes of this uh, um, pos uh, potential trades of pawns then you can go into a favorable endgame with a more healthier pawn structure and uh, you should also be familiar with these elements of the blockade you see uh, in the Vishwanathan Anand uh, versus uh, Tem Temura Jabov game Anand played on a very very nice blocking system against this advanced pawn uh, this bishops after this, the, that move were really paralyzed and uh, as I said here uh, the, uh, black went into a favorable endgame and here exploited these weaknesses which are always present in white's position so they're always present this weak pawns or weak squares on the queen side here in this common nimto indian in this samish uh, samish variation okay i hope you enjoyed this video we'll continue uh, we continue to follow this uh, very very nice opening with some more sidelines i hope it's not too complicated uh, i'm trying to find you uh, at least these ideas if you just can memorize this uh, things that i've written down i think i uh, i think i could help you out and uh, in the next uh, video we'll do another uh, series uh, another variation of this very very cool opening i think because i think it's a clear line 
clear opening, a direct uh, direct opening against d4, and I hope you can uh, apply it sometimes in your own games because then you have a very nice uh, opening repertoire uh, for yourself while playing as black. Okay. I hope you enjoyed this video uh, and you uh, you can watch my uh, blockade video that I've created in my basics in chess series here's the link of that video and you can also watch my Kings Indian uh, series if you want to have a more tactical approach while playing against d4 and you can also subscribe to my channel if you like the content thanks you for watching guys and chess is the best of course